I was going to skip the uh, the consultant less. I'm glad you mentioned it because I'm now five episodes in, and I, I'm probably going to watch the rest of it tonight. This show's insane. I'm bananas. very intrigued yeah. by this weird as fuck show. If there's not something supernatural going on, like if I feel like I, I have, I, I wanted him to float away on a fucking umbrella. Like I seriously, he is evil Mary Poppins, and I. Well, I if, I if it's supernatural, even if they just if they just admit that he's the devil or whatever, suddenly you can no prize away anything in the show. Of like, okay, cool. Like yeah, that, I don't. That bar, that bar he goes to is actually a demon realm. Like that's why it doesn't accept money and it serves he, colors he, instead of drinks. Oh, oh no, Randy that has, I believe has he 100%. found. That was in, that's in L.A., right? Like I loved, like I, I've had two blues. And, wait, and like he looks back at the table, like one of them's a red now, and like. Oh, shit. Episode 425 of the TV Dudes, recorded March 1st, 2023. Party down. This week, we're talking about the return of Party Down on Stars, as well as Prime's strange new miniseries, The Consultant. Plus, we've got Last of Us and Poker Face for dessert. Before we get to all that, I'm Randy. I'm Les. And I'm Nick. And I am looking forward to taking care of uh, the podcast two weeks from now after uh, an unfortunate incident. <laughs> you can only host after you die. I don't know if that's your Christoph Waltz or <laughs> or if you're or if you're running Warner Herzog. I can only do one German yes. accent. It's what actually Warner Herzog is more like this. If case you're one drink. Christoph Waltz is great and it's all, but tell me that that wouldn't have been better with with Werner Herzog in the role. <laughs> <laughs> What is it you do here? You make fun games. I would also have accepted David Lynch. How do you Not make to direct the money? it, yeah. just to oh, actually yeah. be. Just to be in it, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's a shame that one of David Lynch's best performances was on Louis, and no one's ever going to watch that again. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's jump into appetizers. Well, that's and, not true, uh, Randy. Nick I bet the uh, I bet the Emmy judge committee probably would, if they're going back and giving them, would would probably look at it. You're, you're fucking right. I mean, they've already given him a Grammy, so. <laughs> And that cancel culture, it really is something, isn't it? Yep. He's got a canceled EGOT. <laughs> right. As I was just thinking, like, is a C-GOT a thing? Is that a... <laughs> he's got a C-GOT. <laughs> I got an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, a Tony, and then I got it's canceled. That, see, All of it after my career ended. What the hard part is, is getting the C before any of the other ones. Like, it's you. you what you got to do is you try to get the other letters first. and That's then the get canceled. That's the trick. You have to do yeah. an order, yeah. And yeah, then the C, that's bullshit, order. whatever. That's called a Polanski. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you never want to go full Polanski. <laughs> yeah, me and Les watched Megan this week. M3 again? Yes, M3 again. Oh, man, that was great. Your jacket, though. We watched the, <laughs> we watched the unrated uh, version. That was super fun. Which now I'm... Oh, so you watched yeah. the one on Peacock? I, I, I'm... I'm I, I'm curious what the differences are. Me too. God, so am I. Uh, it's not that much more vicious, but I, I'm pretty sure I can, Nick and I were discussing, you're pretty sure I can see where in the kills they would strip it out. I, I'm really mm-hmm. glad I saw the unrated. It would have been uh, a little underwhelming, uh, like kid gloves, to to see this movie without some of the gore. Uh, yeah. But also it's fun to realize that because of, because of streaming, the unrated version is going to be the version for most people going forward. Yeah. Yeah, you, you would have to go pay to rent the rated version. Yeah, even more so than like any other cut. Like for when it, they released a director's cut on DVD, like it was like, okay, cool, that's the director's cut. But like this is just like the cut. Like there's no way to watch the unrated mm-hmm. version on Peacock. You're like, you're, or the rated version on Peacock. You're just watching the unrated version. <laughs> also, I don't know how yeah. much of they show of that kid getting killed, but uh, in my version, they show him getting hit by that car. Uh, a smear coming off and a shoe going underneath the car, and it was hilarious. Like rolls hilarious. out, hilarious, yeah. just fantastic. Well, his big stretchy ear too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, M M three was a lot of fun. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. I'm glad they're making a they're making a sequel. I think right. They are making a they sequel. They already got a green light, or no? Is it yep. the unrated coming? Okay. We uh we we oh, did, if it's we, not M Forgan. We are discussed that should really should be M Forgan. <laughs> It's going to be M3 and 2.0, and I'm going to hate it. <laughs> no, it is a worthy entry into the Killer Doll franchise as far as... You know what's interesting? Less I th- Absolutely. Less I thought about it. The remake of Chucky tries this movie. It's the Because uh, the remake of Chucky that they made uh, was AI. 
Like it was the AI waking mm-hmm. up as Chucky. And yeah. this is the better, this is the version of that movie that works. Yeah. Yeah. It, which, I mean, that, that, you know, that movie's got a lot of stuff going for it. Mark Hamill and, and but yeah. Is it Mark Hamill that's the voice of Chucky in that one? Mark Hamill and then Aubrey Plaza as the mom. And those are the two things going for it. Yeah. And it's still, yeah. Yeah. But no, Megan's great. I really enjoyed this. And uh, Peacock is smart to put uh, Chucky season one as the, what do you want to watch next? Three, two, one. Let's oh. watch <laughs> yeah. Chucky season one. <laughs> that algorithm is like, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not hard science here. You watched a killer doll movie. So let's, let me, I'll pitch you a killer doll show. <laughs> it's a lot better than most other things yeah, of like trying like to pitch all... me right oh we see you watched I'm a movie about a killer fisherman quitting. okay well we have a killer lawnmower movie here if you want to well yes and yes <laughs> which reminds me last we got to put blades on our schedule at some point killer lawnmower movie blades i watched oh yeah uh burn after reading uh the coen brothers movie you know i haven't rewatched that since the first time i watched it and I, I remember thinking like it was it was better it was it was getting pilloried as like one of their lesser lesser out uh, outings at that point, but I wound up liking it. Yeah, it's okay. I I understand why it's not uh seen as one of their better be- ones because it's not really about anything. Uh, it's just a fun yeah. kind of like okay, this movie isn't like even J.K. Simmons by the end of it is like, what did we learn here? I don't know. I guess not to do it again, even though I don't know what we did in the first <laughs> fucking place. And it was like, yeah, I don't know what lesson to take away from this movie either. Like, all the characters are kind of bumbling through shit. But I'll tell you what, this Coen Brothers movie had an ending, so I'm like, okay, cool. It doesn't, it doesn't need to have a point at this point. I'm, it, as long as it has an ending, if it's a Coen Brothers movie, I will take the W. I will take the win on it. Uh, I watched The Daily Show with uh, Hassan Minhaj is or uh, Hassan Min Minhaj Minhaj. Damn it, Minhaj. Minhaj. Okay. And because he took over for uh, uh, whoever, I think I think they're having a bunch of guest hosts right now. I think Sarah Silverman was a host at some point, but he's the host for this week. Yeah, they're doing a Jeopardy style. Yeah. And I've, I've been missing Patriot Act. So I having that back is like a little mini Patriot Act. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, man. Yeah, I really miss Patriot Act. It was good. He actually had Ronnie Chang back uh, on a segment for Asian hate where they yelled at each other. And since he's, since he's in Megan, Megan is like, oh, it's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. At least I use my real name, Ronnie Chang. It is my real, it's on my birth certificate, you moron. (laughs) My name is Ronnie. And then, uh, he was like, (laughs) yeah, sorry. We can't have all, uh, uh, Netflix deals get canceled after two seasons. I mean, what'd you do? Everything gets to three, you fucking failure. (laughs) Like, (laughs) it was, they're so fucking mean. (laughs) So I'm on the Daily Show. Are they? That's great. Are they? Are they testing people for this, or is it just like we don't know what to do? Here's a bunch of people you might like. Like, I, I or is it possible that someone else might get the gig? Do we know? Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't know Trevor Noah. Like, I honestly haven't watched Daily Show since the switchover. I mean, I. It's not that I hate Trevor Noah yeah. or anything. It's just not. I mean, what I wanted from Daily Show, I'm getting from last week tonight. So I never really felt like right. I needed right. it. Uh, and then Samantha B had her show, which was also kind of a different spin on it. And uh, the only one I did like watching consistently was Netflix's Patriot Act, actually, because it was very it had a it, it has a the same thing as last week tonight. It picked a topic and like really went into like even just their one on uh, uh, what do you call it? Cruises, cruise ships was interesting. And I was like, you know, it's it's funny and entertaining, but mm-hmm. also I do like it tricks me into learning something. Yeah, it, it felt like an evolution of the format that followed John Oliver. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And yeah. Daily Show felt like more of the same rather than moving forward. Uh, but it, I tell you what, it might be a stealth uh, audition, maybe, to seeing on how people respond to each host each week to see what... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised yeah, that's if what... Hassan took over the Daily Show. He was, uh, I think he would uh, be a pretty good fit for it. Yeah, I, I, I really like Hassan Minaj. I love. He his, definitely um... has a different energy than Trevor Noah for sure, because he gets you know angry oh, yeah. and yells yeah. and starts yeah. beef with like <laughs> uh, Amazon and and China and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like you know who's never gotten to a Twitter war with China? Trevor Noah. <laughs> 
yeah, so uh, I'll keep an eye on that, see if that, like, what exactly that, if that's just a temporary thing or whatnot. Uh, I watched the first episode back of season three of Mandalorian. That popped up today. Cool. So. I wasn't I wasn't sure if anyone else was going to watch that. Did you catch it, Randy? I did. Yeah, I thought, uh, pretty good. Uh, it, you have to... I enjoyed it. You have to watch that fucking episode of, of, uh, Boba Fett. You know what's, you know what's weird? They didn't even, there's no reference to that at all in the, in the, in the in intro. The flashback. Like, like... They, they only flash back to Mandalorian <laughs> scenes, and I'm like, dude, you, there's a lot of plot that happened in that fucking B- Boba Fett episode. <laughs> yeah, you don't think anybody's gonna be watching this and be like, wait a minute. I thought Grogu was with Luke. Yeah, like, including no the whole giving Grogu back <laughs> is like, what the fuck? Like, so, so Mandalorian flashes back to Boba Fett and just doesn't no, even acknowledge that no. it's Boba Fett. So, like, even in show, it's Mando's yeah, show yes. in a flashback. No, it That's doesn't great. even, but it doesn't flashback at all. Like in the previously on, we don't even see it. It's just he's yeah. back. There's no it reference. Pre- to what like, it almost pretends ba- Boba Fett didn't happen. It doesn't reference yeah. any of those events. It doesn't it's, like. It's just <laughs> hilarious. It's just that Grogu's there now. Like there's a there's a there it's like there was a there was a Mandalorian season two point five that happened that nobody saw, and the fact is it did happen and people did see it. <laughs> Mandalorian colon book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Well, even his buddy the that's now the like fucking mayor of that town is like I'm sorry I didn't watch I Boba Fett. Why is the kid that. still with you? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and even then I kind of like that uh, he. He's living the good life. Like, hey, hey yep. we can make a place nice and better, but we it used to be a fucking bounty hunter place, so we still have scrubs <laughs> and pirates that come around. Like, word hasn't gotten around yet of like, hey, no, and, we're legit uh, now. So, you know what? You know what? Let's let's uh, let's throw this in the side dishes because I actually want to talk about this, and and there's a fair sure. amount to talk about. Let's let's throw it let's throw it past the spoiler barrier, and we'll we'll talk about it on the side All dishes. All right, yeah, I'll finish up my. I, did, my I, did, I didn't know anybody else was going to talk about. I didn't know anybody else was going to watch it. So. Oh, I like you, it's the only thing of the Star Wars universe that I like, man. Like, like it's the only thing of like, oh, Mando. Okay, yeah, let's let's do it. All right, good to know. All right, uh, I watched the P- party down uh, because we were gonna watch. We watched the uh, this week the the revival of it or renewal or reboot or I don't know what the fuck to call it. Uh, I've never watched Party Down before, so I watched a couple episodes of it. Oh, interesting. What did you think? Mm-hmm. I think it's very interesting. Uh, I think it's a lot like uh, it's weird. I like this as a better version of The Office. Mm-hmm. Did you get to the episode where Keith Mars is naked? I did not. No, I I only got a couple I episodes thought, in. It's like I, the second. Or... I thought that was like the second or third episode. Oh, I thought that's pretty early on. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, you you, you got to be close to it. <laughs> no, I think I'm only three, four episodes in or something. Yeah. Papa Mars. Papa Mars. I love Jane Lynch already being the old actor in this one. I'm like, okay, what is she going to do? It's like, like this is tw- like 15 years ago. Well, yeah, we'll discuss her in the review. I think too. Adam Scott yeah. uh, is really good uh, as far as he looks in this one. He looks like an actor that is he looks like he could be famous, but isn't, uh, mm-hmm. which is interesting because I know Adam Scott and how successful he's gotten so at first. But. In the first season, he really looks like somebody that like quit the business. I don't know. It he has the well, he has the exact he has the exact right energy. Well, it's, and we'll talk about this when we get to actually talking about Party Down. But it's interesting because when Party Down first came on, none of these people were super famous. They hadn't done a lot of stuff, and yeah. so like if you if you were a diehard TV watcher, you knew all these people. But if you weren't, you might know one of them. Mm-hmm. And now you now people know all of them, mm-hmm. and that that changes things. It, it was it was an interesting experience. Yeah, no, I I I found it very educational. Yeah, I guess, and then I watched a uh, part of Venom. Let there be carnage, since it was on Stars, and that way I was <laughs> also on our new Star subscription to watch Party Down. <laughs> Man, I uh, I put the Equalizer on my list to watch, and I think of the two of us, I may have made the better decision. I haven't watched sure. the Equalizer yet. You understand, but. I feel like that will be good. There be carnage. Oh, I don't know. Did, Les, did we talk about this last week? Dark Vengeance, uh, the other Bridget Kingsley movie. I don't think we did. Yeah, I just, I just was looking. Yeah, we did not. Uh, we watched. Uh, yes. You remember Rock? Uh, we, we continued watching Randy? through uh, Bridget Kingsley. 
Of course, I don't, of course Jen, I don't you remember Rocktopussy. No. Who could forget? Yeah, I I remember Rocktopussy. Astonishing Pussy. Tales of Terror, Rocktopussy. <laughs> yeah. So they uh, they well, also made a movie called Dark Rising, uh, where... <laughs> well, go ahead. Yeah, well, it's a couple movies and a TV series, like, and, uh, and maybe multiple TV series. Yes. I'm not sure, but, like, it's a long-running thing. And me and Les, of course, we did a Urban Jobs 2 fucking, like... Uh, <laughs> The, we like, we had the, like, we we fell into it again. We actually said the thing, you know. Like, damn surely, it. surely we of, don't need to have watched it's a lot of lore and backstory. They keep referring to, yeah, <laughs> including to. I love that so much backstory. I love that Bridget Kingsley's characters seem to be like, less you put it, like she wants to be the Schwarzenegger of the '80s or whatever. Of just like her plan at the end of this movie is okay. I got it. I'm gonna hit him like really hard. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, he's like getting a like a power up from the demon realm or whatever, so I'm just gonna hit him really hard so that stops. Like, <laughs> that's your plan. It's like, yeah, but really hard. You're not listening to me. I'm gonna hit him, but really hard this time. Like another character's like, but but didn't I mean like I hit him earlier? Yeah, but I'm gonna hit him really hard. <laughs> <laughs> like she just keeps. <laughs> well, yeah, realizing that like it, the consistent thing that makes her movies all just amazing is that she's clearly written her role or or her role has been written. Yeah, just to be played by Schwarzenegger and then just recast with a hot woman. Mm -hmm. uh, like, who has no problem acting as the costume designer and then not giving herself any clothes. Through yeah, most it's, it, of that movie, Bridget is King like, are you, are you not cold? Movies. <laughs> like, you're, you've got to be cold. Also, are, aren't you the costume designer? Like, okay, I'm just... <laughs> You clearly you're cool with this. Well, also that she's possibly yeah, she just the whoops villain ass, the... doesn't care, saves the dudes, tells them they're terrible. She like uh, I love that the dude at the end of it grabs her leg like Conan the Barbarian, like like the like a Conan Barbarian pose, of like oh oh sorry. Oh. <laughs> they they full on dude like Landry Cannon is <laughs> clearly like some junior college's linebacker from back in the day. Like this dude is is he looks like a Flash Gordon stand in, and they fully recreate the like. Mm -hmm. uh, like like girl with her arms wrapped around one of Conan's legs uh, <laughs> next to the throne like hear the lamentations of the women like they, they just fully do the scene and also yeah, uh, what's her name? They're a blast. Summer Vale is her name in this one and she might be the villain considering they bring back yes. a character and from the first movie and even though we haven't watched the first movie they showed us like this character what we thought were like, like uh, you, you, but we, I thought you died did you check for my pulse? I was actually paralyzed and hoping you would help me. And you took my you took my jacket. It was cold. <laughs> you took my jacket. I was right there. You did yeah, not check yeah. my pulse. You, you find out that the hero of it, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody shows up mad at her, and she's like, "I thought you died in the last." Well, movie. first she doesn't recognize who no, it I was is. Paralyzed, like, and you didn't. I'm even sorry. Check. Who are you? you? Just stole my me. Coat. I'm from the first movie. I re I resurrected. Oh. I was par integral part of it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Nah. Uh, she gets super mad. Yeah, I'm not placing you. I was like, oh shit, is she the worst? <laughs> she is anyway, actually yeah, the worst. That... <laughs> uh, and <laughs> let... a, a space assassin clone demon. Yeah, let Les go forward with that. Since uh, what about you, Les? Yeah, it's really uh, you should you should seek out Dark Vengeance at uh, <laughs> whenever you can, uh, and also Rocktopussy, which is even better. Jedi though. So uh, this week I watched, uh, of course. Yes, yes, you should. Rocktopus is amazing. Yeah, um, the, M3 again was, was great, we're, uh, as we discussed. We're warding away from no Ginger, man de ginger Dead Man movies for you. That's not, no. Like, but Rocktopus, definitely. Uh huh. I know they sound identical to you, uh, but they, I, there's yeah, a vast I, difference. Get a couple no. of ciders in you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, Watched uh, Mayfair Witches, uh, which I believe is the, the season finale. I'm glad they got a season two. Uh, this was cool. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the season. It moves along really nicely, and uh, where they leave it is cool. Uh, feels like very middle finger, like, holy shit, what's she going to do in season two? Uh, watched a underwater haunted house movie called The Deep House uh, to YouTube, like a couple that does like YouTube exploration, creepy videos. Uh, here's about a flooded lake uh i it's fictional in the movie but there are towns like this uh, there's a few in the u.s there's one in wales uh where they've uh flooded an area for a, a to make a lake for hydroelectric dam and clear out of town and flood it uh 
So they're going to dive down and they dive down to this house and it's a little bit Lovecrafty and a little bit haunted and really creepy. And basically the entire freaking movie takes place underwater. Yeah, this one's been on my list. Uh, my my buddy Nick watched it's, it and he recommended it. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's bleak. It's really creepy. Uh, it, it's obviously it's not a trick that works every time, but it definitely takes just like a an okay haunted house movie and ups the creep factor considerably to put it all underwater. Uh, jump scares all work differently. There's there's some fun like fish swimming out of shit and scaring the shit out of these two people. Uh, and then somehow the, there's still a the story cat itself is actually down there. nicely creepy. It's a catfish jump scare. <laughs> oh man, tell me they do a catfish. Yes. Well, do you know? How... <laughs> uh, I don't know what the fuck swims past him at one point, but it's a big ass fish that freaks him out. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah, Deep House was it was worth a watch. Of course, kept up on the middle list uh, past where they caught Red John now, which I forgot how nicely they dole that out. They they go back and forth with you for like a full fucking season of being pretty sure you know and then it being wrong. Uh, a couple of different ways. Uh, watch some Parks and Rec at 30 Rock. Uh, watch The Consultant, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Of course, kept up on Night Court, which continues to be adorable. Watch Gentlemen and Snatch for the Patreon. Uh, I actually watched a last week tonight because it was about AI uh, and chat GPT and all of that, which is creepy. Uh, it was also, it that was that. It was that, but also that opening about uh, James O'Keefe and his musical. Oh, oh my God. God. That was like that was yes. like candy. Oh, was man. so fucking good. <laughs> My jaw fell open so many times, not I, least of which was the Gangster's Paradise. Yes. I watched the, I watched that whole thing and I think about about it like ten times. I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a it, it, it was it was a delight. Said, oh my god, it out loud a couple of times. Yes. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Watched uh watched the new party down, which we'll discuss. Uh watched Dark Vengeance, of course. The thing that I know, Randy, you watched that I also watched, and we can segue into uh, discussion. Uh, the newest Quantum Leap finally fucking came back. And man, man, came back strong. It was another great episode. Yes. And again, like, I, I, I'm mad that they skipped two weeks on me after coming back after mm-hmm. a break before. Well, mm-hmm. depending on your Which quantum perspective, Whatever. it was always uh, aired. <laughs> yes, all these episodes aired at the same time 50 years ago. But he uh, he jumps back and they've they laid groundwork in previous episodes about his mom and cooking and his yeah. ways. Well, it, this episode paid those off so nicely with him jumping into uh, a daughter in an Indian family running a restaurant. Him saying awesome uh, when he lands and, like the various ways they're it's not oh boy, but it's pretty fun. Like his different reactions. Yeah. I, I love when he's like, I've got knife skills. I'm going to make you all this Indian food. I'm holding you to that. Um, you better remember that when you the finish thing all I'm this. I'm really liking about this. I, I, I do love the through line, the like the overarching story of like why did Ben leap? Wait a minute, now what? Now that um, Ian like is investigating, like wait, how, Ian seems like maybe they're the ones who caused him to leap somehow. And there's there's some interesting stuff going on. But I've realized that the strength of this show is kind of like Ghosts. Every the 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 episode of the week works. Like I was very emotionally affected by this week's episode. And yeah, it's tying into overall arcing stuff with Ben and his mom. But just like. The family showing the family the showing up worked. was a really heartfelt, really great like Pixar moment. I was like, man, you guys, you guys got this. You can write this show. And and I really hated the uh, their landlord. Oh man, uh, who clearly burned their yes. place down. Like like she's just aggressively mm-hmm. caring. But earlier than that would have been a turn. Like it, it's great. What, what I love is that Quantum Leap is is yeah, it's, the, it's, it's it's such a leftist show now. It's like we hate landlords. And we want we're pro we're super pro trans and like we're we're racially diverse like <laughs> yeah you like get on board motherfuckers. I like that uh, he outright uses the team to get the thing done. Like like when she's like you know he's like well our restaurant bro we could do a pop up restaurant wouldn't that work she's like how are you going to put that together don't I have a team of geniuses on the other side of your yeah. comm device make <laughs> yeah. them do it. <laughs> Like look through the look through the fucking past until and like sure enough they like give him a list of weddings that are happening that day. Yeah, it's it's and he it's really them. smart. It's, it's really a wedding reception. Smart, like yeah. time travel government agency. Like they are using their resources well. I also love that in the like like they let Ian take the day. Like it's not like they bug out like most shows, yeah. you know, and, and are just like banished. And, like magic gives them that like like hey, I know this is probably throwing you for a loop. It's throwing all of us for a loop. Apparently, you in the future. 
uh, or maybe the villain, maybe kick this yeah. off. What we don't know. Mm-hmm. Take the day, and then while they're gone, it's like, well, we'll just look at the computer and see where somebody is in the. Does anyone yeah, know how to read there's this? A, there's a security Fuck. expert being like, "We're beyond my and like, skills." Like they're yeah. looking at the computer screen, and there's like, they're like they look for one person, and there's like a half dozen probabilities of where the person might be. And like, and just like, or that's what it looks like on screen, at least like the guys yeah. like everywhere. And they're like, I, this is, I'm trying, yeah, but I don't this is past this. me. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> like everybody's like, I, I got it. I got it. I don't know how to read this. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I try to read the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. It's totally that. It's like, well, yeah, I'll just, I'll just put Kung Fu in your, in your yeah. brain. I, mm. I run. We I remain wait. so pleased with this show. I I am surprised at how much I like it. Yeah, same. Uh, my turn, I guess. Um, yep. So that's let's it for see. Me. I watched eight episodes of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine season four, which is uh, this is when uh, Ben has shaved his head and things have gotten serious, and they're in the Dominion War, and it also so I'm 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 digging it. It's it's doing great episodes. There's also we a always fantastic know shit's about to go down when characters shave. Yeah, he's, he's got a goatee and a bald head. Nobody's fucking around anymore. But um, there is a great uh, episode where uh, Quark and his uh, brother are taking his nephew to Starfleet Academy on Earth. He's going to be the first Ferengi ever to go to uh, to Starfleet Academy, which has been a great little runner. Uh, it's, it's actually a really good story. That I know I happen to know the payoff of it. And uh, so they're, they're going to Earth to, to drop him off in the ship that Quark has bought. And of course... It was from an old uh, nemesis, and it is sabotaged. And they wind up traveling into the past and landing at Roswell, in 1947. And uh, the the Roswell thing is basically the Ferengi. And uh, at first, their universal translators are broken, and the general keeps calling them Martians. And the scientist and his his lady wife, doctor, are both like you know trying to communicate with them. But they get that fixed. And Quark immediately is like, oh, we're among these brutish humans and they're all they're all violent. And they use atomic bombs. He's like, I can make so much money on this planet and basically just starts making the, the con where he's like the alien that has come from beyond to give them. He's going to give them phasers and transport technology. Oh, my God. Hundreds of years before they're supposed to have it <laughs> because he's going to make so much money at it. It's hilarious. It's a great episode. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Is Quark the villain of this, of this series or what? Oh, man. Quark, Quark is is great because he is such the the uh, the greedy bastard, and uh, his his nemesis uh, Odo, the shape shifting uh, uh, sheriff, always always is sort of foiling him, but also has sort of a fondness for him. It's it's a fun dynamic. Um, I watched a couple more episodes of News Radio season four. Uh, this is the period when Lisa is the boss and does not want to be, and uh, they, they I watched the episode where they they make Bill the boss to try and teach him a lesson, and Bill basically kills it and starts making up a bunch of pretend work for people. It's, it's a great episode. Uh, it's always fun watching Bill get over and everybody else in the office. And, uh, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I watched the second episode of Picard, which I feel like it's getting better, but I, it's the, the Star Trek Picard is just such a mixed bag of a show. That's you're either in or you're out and you've got to be in based on, yes, some of this is really stupid, but a lot of it's fun. Uh, watched Poker Face, which we'll talk about in the uh, dessert, and uh, watched um, two more episodes of Star Wars Bad Batch, which I'm really enjoying. Watched another episode of Shrinking, which I continue to really enjoy. I forget what what this week's Shrinking was. I feel like they uh they they they've had um oh Harrison Ford's character's daughter was like found out that he has Parkinson's and she's sort of trying to take over his care. Um, oh yeah, and there's a bit with Jimmy and uh. Uh, man, I'm I'm like Jessica Williams' character that they that I'm not sure I like where they're going, but I'm interested to see where they go with it. Uh, Les, you still watching this one? No, I'm I've dropped oh, really? off. I'm, I, go back I'm to really it. digging it. It's it's definitely one of those. It's one of my favorite shows right now. And because of it, because of Krista Miller being on it, the first time I'm watching it with, uh, we started watching a couple episodes of Cougar Town. Uh, so went back. She's never seen it, so we watched the first two episodes of Cougar Town, and then she watched some without me, and then we watched episodes 10 and 11 of Cougar Town. And it's funny because Cougar Town is a little bit dated by comparison. And uh, and I can tell she's like, she's like, these people are kind of terrible sometimes, but it is also very charming and uh, and, and a, a great ensemble. And so so that's kind of fun, kind of fun to watch it again. I watched uh, Scream 4 and Scream 5 in preparation for Scream 6 coming out next week. I watched Last of Us, which we'll talk about on the, uh, the dessert, talked about last week tonight. 
I watched a couple movies. I watched Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, uh, which I thought was fine. I think this was the thing, a case where the, the trailers gave away too much. Like most of the really funny, cool moments are in the trailers. And the trailer presented this like it's going to be this weird, wacky Nicolas Cage movie. And it's kind of a pretty straightforward movie that's not that weird. Oh, really? That's actually disappointing yeah. to hear. I I just, it's fine. It's okay. I just, I I wanted it to be a lot weirder. Um, Sharon Horgan plays his ex-wife. I love her. Uh, Pedro Pascal is great, of course. Nicholas Cage is fun as himself. Like, it's a fun movie. Uh, Tiffany Haddish and Ike Barinholtz play the, like, F- the CIA agents. Like, it's a fun movie, but it's not as weird as I wanted it to be. It is just kind of a straightforward action comedy that hits everything by the notes, and it's not as imaginative as you want from that premise. Yeah, I mean, I, I was uh, excited because that's so... I thought this might be the better version than Guy Ritchie's, which is coming out uh, a little, because this is so a parallel of, of Nicolas Cage's actual career of, like, a un, like the unbearable weight yeah. of massive, like, using this uh, actor to get close to a fucking... Like, it's, it's like the subplot in uh, the Weird Al movie, basically, with yeah. Pablo Escobar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I honestly, I think the Guy Ritchie version is probably going to be better because it'll be Guy Ritchie. Um, sure. Uh, I also watched Knock at the Cabin, uh, which is M. Night Shyamalan adapting a novel. Um, oh, how was that? I had oh. a friend that I think walked out of it. I I That's liked it. I, I liked it about as much as I liked Unbearable Weight, which is to say it's solid, but I feel like, again, they gave away too much of the trailers. And I was definitely, I was like, Weirdly, for a Shyamalan movie, I was expecting more of a twist. It kind of goes sure. down the exact path you expect it to go down, hey. and the scenes are all the scenes are all well done. The characters are all good. Everybody's good in it. But I was like, that that's it. That's kind of what I expected. Like I like there was no big like moment. Solid at this point for M Night Shyamalan is more than I was expecting. So like that's that's hey, fair. That is fair. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's okay. Uh, I I it's it's good performances. Um, I, I would say if the, if the trailer intrigued you, it's worth a watch, but it definitely made me, made me want to like, I saw some people reacting to it and saying that the movie, that the ending they changed in the movie was worse. And now I'm really curious what the ending of the book is. And I'm kind of curious to read the book and see what were the Shyamalanisms and what was the actual original text, because there's some stuff in there. Like, I don't want to give anything away, but you know how Shyamalan likes to like make something up and then act like it's a real, like, um, for example, in Unbreakable. He has these all these rules about superheroes and supervillains. He's like, yeah, the villain often has a big head, and sometimes the hero and the villain are friends. And I'm like, man, that's like one time. What you're make that's not a thing. What are you talking about? Sure. Uh, there's a there's a thing there's a thing like that here where I'm like, was this in the book? Or was this another thing where Shyamalan couldn't do the basic fucking research to make his metaphor work? Well, hopefully he just takes the dialogue from the from the book because uh, that's the only other thing of like <laughs> M Night Shyamalan yeah. movies like. Okay, so I somehow think Emily Shyamalan has gone through his entire life without actually having one conversation with an actual human. Well, whenever he guest stars in the movie, he comes off as like a weird alien, so I do think he's a weird dude. Well, even how he writes characters is like, no yeah. one talks like what you're doing. Yeah. I don't... Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, other than that, it was just all homework. Uh, the two Guy Ritchie movies, The Consultant, The Mandalorian, Quantum Leap, and uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about all that in uh, in just a minute. Randy, did you, uh, you mentioned Scream. Uh, did you happen to see where, uh, I guess Nev Campbell is not coming back for Scream 6. I gather they offered her less than previous Scream movies uh, or or something shitty. Yeah. And where Matthew Lillard, did you see where Lillard I did. got asked about it? I saw that. And here's the thing. I thought that was, I, that was great. Like, Matthew Lillard gives no fucks. I really kind of love that dude. <laughs> I think there's a reason why they offered her what they offered her, which is that her arc is done in five. Like, there's no reason to bring her back for six. Well, if you're going to bring her back as a cameo. Yeah, I don't think they need yeah. her in six. And I think that's but... the thing. I think they're probably, like, offering her money for a cameo. And that's what she was, she was insulted and turned it down. Which, yeah. that makes sense. But, like, just don't offer it. Sure. Just be like, hey, your story arc is done. We're going to move on. Uh, you're well, great. I think they're going to try you. and... Now that Jenna... Uh, I'm not sure if Jenna Ortega. Ortega is a bigger yeah. star now. If that means that she, her role in the franchise is going to be come to an end. Because that's what usually happens when stars get big. If like the lesser franchise usually yeah. gets like, okay, I'm gonna get kill my character, uh, or if she's gonna take over. 
the lead, yeah, it's, she'll eat one of those. But but the lead, her her like sister from Five is uh, Tori from Cobra, Cobra Kai, and she's great, and she's also not as big as Jenna Ortega. So and they're bringing back, uh, and they're bringing back Hayden Pantieri. Yes, yeah, which well, is cool because I, I always liked her. Um, Wait, I thought your character thought, died. No, so, she got she got hurt, but I don't mm-hmm. think she died. Uh, I guess I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, re- regardless, I'm looking forward to the screen movies. Same, same. I, uh, I I came back. This this is like a second trilogy, and I like the second trilogy better than the first one, to be honest. All right. Just a reminder: you can support us by going over to Patreon.com/slash TV Dudes. Throw us a buck an episode. In exchange, we get to keep up with our streaming services, pay for our hosting costs, and you get bonus content each week. This week, our guy Richie Marathon continues uh, as we talk about his high points of Snatch and the Gentleman. All right. Let's let's have main course. Let's let's talk about party down. Less you you've watched all of this, right? It's been it's been a while, and I did not go back and and catch it back up yet. Uh, though I'm sure I will over the next couple of weeks. I didn't either, but I keep dropping. But yeah, I always enjoyed party down. Uh, I really like this. Yeah, Rob it's Thomas, Rob, the it's, humor of it's it. It's Rob Thomas who did you know Veronica Mars and um, uh, I Zombie and other good things that I can't think of right now. Uh, Cupid. Paul Rudd is a co-creator on this. Paul Rudd was originally supposed, there's been articles going around on this, Paul Rudd was originally supposed to play the Henry Pollard role, and then he got famous basically right about the time this was going on, and wow, so Adam okay. Scott stepped in. And Paul Rudd would have been great as Henry Pollard, by the way, but Adam Scott's sure. even better. That's, a, that's, that's good recasting, though. Yeah. That's solid yeah. recasting. Yeah. I guess Paul Rudd and Adam Scott were friends, and that's sort of how that happened. That makes sense. Which which is probably also how Paul Rudd wound up on Parks and Rec. But this um this has a cast that at the outset, none of these people were that big. But now you look at it, it's Adam Scott, Ken Marino, Ryan Hansen, Martin Starr, Lizzie Kaplan, Megan Mullally, Jane Lynch, uh like all of those people, with possibly the exception of Ryan Hansen, have gone on to be notable big big people like martin Starr broke out big with silicon valley lizzie kaplan's done a whole bunch of tv series um uh, i, don't well, I mean they couldn't get lizzie Honestly, kaplan I'm back just from the first on, episode even. right like she's a fucking like i think they might have just gotten yeah she's a yeah she's red carpet disgust. footage of her <laughs> like uh i still feel like ryan hansen's gonna have his role at some point in the next five ten years Ryan Hansen, the, the, the kid's got he's got such great comedic chops. I love Ryan Hansen, but he plays the same guy in everything, which is an unbelievable douchebag. Yep. So Somebody's going to figure out how to how to hit the sweet spot of it, though. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, he's he's he just hasn't quite like it. He hasn't quite found the song to play his one note in just yeah. yet. Yeah. Uh, the, but somebody's going to fucking find it. The gag of Party Down always was that these guys were all. Kind of, it was it was the riff on on the thing that that's big in L.A., which is like everybody's working as a cater waiter until they make it. What about the people that never make it and just stay cater waiters, but they think they're, you know, temporary cater mm-hmm. waiters? And Jane Lynch's character was the epitome of that. Like yes. her, her weird. This is like her character from Forty Old Virgin. Her weird, um, older lady who is just so you're like not sure she's in reality half the time. Like it's a very Jane Lynch role. Um, she's mentoring everybody from this weird <laughs> other fucking reality. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, got her advice to everybody, and and all of her, even in the new episode, her anecdote of like and the superhero movie that I was in. And by the end of that story, like, yeah, the movie never came out. No, I think the end of yeah. that story, her uh, coworker died on it. Like, like <laughs> yeah, it was weirdly like, had a weird dark turn in it. Yeah. Um, are, is she? I can't remember. I, I mix up Jane Lynch, Jane Lynch parts. This is the one where her, a lot of her stories turn into weird, like, sex stories, right? Like, that her character has just had a lot of weird sex. I don't know. Like, yeah, if I remember right. Or is that a 40-year-old yes. virgin? I can't remember. From the episodes I watched, she just has her oh, lot no, of weird Oh, no, that was 40-year-old virgin, that, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Like, so her, yeah. Yeah, that's 40-year-old virgin where I think okay, it's all yeah. sex. Though she yeah. just has a weird energy all the time. And then Megan, she left to do Glee, I think. And then Megan Mullally replaced her as the other weirdo. Mm-hmm. And Megan Mullally is always good at playing a weirdo. So having the mm-hmm. two of them together was great. Yeah. And I love that everybody's moved on and found their new thing, except, of course, for Ken Marino as Ron Donald, the the ultimate company man, who now his, his dream is going to be to buy this catering company. Well, and Martin Starr, Martin who Starr, yeah. was, was always so convinced of his own superiority and, in fact, was just never going to make it. And like like that he flopped so big with his, his novel makes so much sense. 
Well, the fact that everyone else, at least yeah. at some You're point, had a sci-fi. different, yeah. <laughs> like everyone else seems to have at least at some point, like everyone else, like apparently is going to hit hard times and have to come back to work for Party Down or whatever, or yeah, yeah. or par- are now power owner- owners of Party Down or whatever the fuck, right? Uh, right. But Martin Starr never did anything else. Like it feels like yeah. he's. He, he, this is just his no no he didn't move away and come back right right this is just, and he's, he's still, still got there. that douchey like well if i'm discovered after i'm dead i guess i'm like dude yeah, no one's he's, ever dis- he's he's still convinced that he's better than this job which when is they hilarious. go through my papers yeah <laughs> it's like dude you, it's been 10 years this is you this isn't you're not a better version of this well adam scott's character i love him basically being like he's like no I'm a teacher now. I'm married. I have kids. Like this is all behind me. I gave up on trying to act. Uh, I and that was kind of his role in the first one. He'd sort of he was the guy who had given up, uh, and then he kept getting dragged back into it. And it's clearly what's going to happen again. Um, I don't know what's well, going on with him and his wife, but looks like I, I'm a I'm a middle school English teacher. Oh, cool. In what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real. Did you mean right. the wife yeah. that we hear on the phone but never see? Never see. Like, yes. Like, okay, yes. so that your wife isn't actually a character. Like, that's a. It, <laughs> your kids aren't characters. They're a plot thing for you. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and uh, him, even just him flirting with Jennifer Garner was like, I don't know what Gen- yeah. Jennifer Garner, I don't know what you're doing here, but it feels like you're like going to be important in the next episode at least. But Jennifer Garner's great. I feel in like, this. you're here like because she's... we couldn't get Lizzie. Jennifer Garner's really good in this, by the way. I, I thought I thought this was one of my favorite stuff I've seen her do in a while. Dude, I still love that he's still getting recognized yeah. as. Are we having fun yet? Are we having fun yet? <laughs> the yeah. guy from the beer it commercials. Just, it just takes longer, it just and takes so it longer ha- now. Yeah, it just hangs the sword and, over him and longer. It's worse, yeah, it's because now somebody says it, and it goes away for thirty minutes, and then they'll circle back around That's and like, find him. Yep. I yep. mean, <laughs> I don't I figured even it know. out. Oh, good. He he has, he has to be around the right age group of people now to, for even people to get that. Like, it, it would be like now if I were to go like 10 years, like, hey, are you the red stripe guy? <laughs> <laughs> Gay responsibility. <laughs> Shut up. I don't do that I anymore. I think that's one of the one of the things he says to Ken Marino is is like, oh, it's great. Yeah, my kids don't know the beer commercials, so that's always fun to hang out with them. <laughs> like like i've i've made i've made the two humans who don't know <laughs> i may I had to make two humans that don't know what i did before <laughs> if anyone ever shows my kids those commercials i'll fucking murder <laughs> I'll kill i think they did they did give um ryan hansen a lot to do in this episode like i thought i thought he got to play the uh um <laughs> the he 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 seems like he's made it He's going to be a superhero. He's getting along with everybody. He's a little less douchey in some ways. He's about to get involved yet, in their version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Which is the Mancer except, universe. I don't know. Everything's a yep. necrom- like a nec- necromancer, like yes. uh, Aquamancer, yeah, or like fuck? whatever. Yeah. And Ecomancer, then, Nitromancer. Yeah. And then, and then the poor guy, uh, he made a, he, he has the whole, it, our, our, our band sounded like White Pride. It, that, that sounds like, it sounds like our, your song was called "Our Struggle." Yeah, I know what I, none of that. They came down on the train. They gave us our stars. We played it at like... a Jewish wedding. <laughs> oh, oh boy! <laughs> oh God, lined us up and shot. Yeah, and like I love that the other actors like that's so clearly about your, you know, rise yeah, as an get actor. It at all, yeah. I know, man. I love. And the, then Jane his... Lynch being like, "Oh yeah, no, that was awkward the day of." Yeah, the guitar, the his the guitarist, the guy from Cabin in the Woods. Uh, that's and... what I thought it was. I was looking. He's not on IMDb. It must have been uncredited or something because he's not. Oh, in okay, here. he's a he's kind of a big character there. Like, yeah, he's the, like, he is. Even Martin Starr says later, I'm like, oh shit, you're right. Real life has actual supervillains in it. <laughs> like, oh, <it's... laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but Franz the... Kranz, that's who that is. Franz Kranz, yeah. yeah. He's I can't find him in the IMDb. I was looking. I was like, that dude, I even like the new kid. The uh uh. Yeah, the name? Tyrell Jackson. Yeah, Saxon yes. is his name. The uh, making it help. Oh yeah, Melvin Tyrell Jackson Williams, uh, who plays. He's playing basically the same character from Brockmire again. He's okay, basically yeah. playing Charles. Yeah, yeah, but his his character here is Saxon. Um. So. Oh, I I loved him just giving him shit back of like, yeah. oh, you mean like little dancey videos? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, that's sarcasm. But, I'm fucking with you, man. <laughs> I I enjoyed this the same level. I always enjoy Party Down. But the thing that got me that just said, like, belly laugh funny 
was when Ken Marino is like, everything's working out. And then it's like, and it tell, and then they reveal what time it is that this is all taking place in 2019. Right yes, before the that pandemic. Was funny. Oh my God. Yes. What time well, I, I, Yes, they ended up. Well, they had this like, you know, 2020 is going to be my 2020 will be my year. And I'm like, wait a minute, 2020. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then the, the smash cut to him living in the van. Oh, man. Just because <laughs> that's such a great, perfect. like, I, I didn't even think of that, but like, Party no, Down is a thing that is a service that can't survive the pandemic. <laughs> oh, God, no. No, it's, it's the worst. 14 yeah, months was, later. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing that there's only one one graffiti dick on the side of that van. <laughs> yeah, I uh so in a way this was the appetizer. I'm I'm looking for next week we're going to see what the rest of it what the show looks like where everybody actually is after 14 months. Right. So I'm also, I'm how very rich excited is for more. Jane Lynch. She, very rich. She's like like she writes grand 10 grand and is like this is 10 million. 10 million dollars. 10 grand, right? A grand means a thousand. Really? Well, that explains a lot. Oh, oh a yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. A thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I also love that, that like, that's the first thing that, that, uh, hit, you know, that Adam Scott suggests to him is like, hey, isn't Jane Lynch super rich now? Can't you just go ask her? And it is immediately no. discarded. Like, yeah, no, she's crazy. I don't want to be and, business and partners with this crazy hippy dippy. It's, it's not like when you're sitting around. Yeah. It, but it's not like when you're around and like, well, you know, I would ask one of my friends or a loved one, but but nobody I know has the money. No, you literally like there's a woman in the other room that you have a long history with who, you know, yep. would probably do it. Oh, yeah. And you won't ask her because. <laughs> but then you're going to be that you're going to be tied to her forever. Then immediately after she writes the right. check, you can see what a bad decision it was. Her ideas are terrible. Yeah. And now oh, you can't yeah. tell her. No. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? No, I'm. <laughs> no, she's like a crazier version of hacks. <laughs> yeah i'm uh i'm excited to see where this goes i messaged y'all in the chat and i was like i was like stars are history towards villains they gave us one episode of party down like give us three god damn it i want more of this yeah uh yeah i'm excited to see the rest of it uh it's, it's a it's a successful successful return i think we're special you and i the blonde our hair and blue our eyes world it should be ours but they just want money it's a conspiracy Hollow what? Cost. Let's jump over and talk about our side dishes. Let's start with the consultant, which I put on there on kind of a whim. I saw the trailer. It's got Christoph Waltz, who I like, but it's on Prime, who, as we know, their their brand is beige. And um yes. I wasn't gonna watch this, and then unless you mentioned that you'd watched it and it was and that you were kind of into, into it. And so I started watching it, and I'm definitely gonna finish it after we're finished recording this episode. Dude, this is immediately more interesting than most of what Stars puts out. It, it's one of the best things Prime, yeah. Prime has done. Like it's, like I, I don't even care if this pays off at the end. It is at least engaging. Of like, <laughs> it's right, not like yeah, rings it's... of power. Of like, hey, you know that interesting part about it? We're gonna skip over that. Like, no, here the interesting part. No, like we're gonna just actually stay on the actual uh, consulting. Like, Christoph Waltz is the center of the show. Less you mentioned, I think I think Matt Shockman is one of the producers. He's not listing the writing credits or anything. One of the producers. He's yeah. not one of the writers. Uh, yeah. The guy who it looks like a writer on Servant, the yeah. M. Night Shyamalan which, which I've not Apple seen. TV show. Oh, and he wrote uh, for... Which I'd heard good things about, but I didn't get into. And he wrote for Hotel Babylon and 24 Live Another Day. That is yeah. an interesting CV there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, this is based on a book, which I'm now really interested in reading. Uh, yeah, uh, Brittany O'Grady plays Elaine. She was in the first season of White Lotus. She's the friend uh, that gets the oh, trouble for stealing. Yeah, great in this. That's where I know her from. 
She is fucking great. Like she is great. Like she is so good in this that on the second or third episode, I looked up of like I've got to know her from another show. Like yeah. that actress is really good. Oh man, the guy, the the lead, the lead guy, Nat, Nat Wolf, Wolf, of course. I don't. What has he been? I mean, he was in the stand. He played Lloyd in that really bad stand uh, adaptation they did, and he was in that uh, really terrible Apple yeah. Plus show. Or no, uh, he played something called Kill Team, which I think was. Uh, like I'm looking at his is what he's what he's been in. There's nothing. His, I'm like, oh, this is a good thing. It's either him or his brother that was in Hereditary. I think it was his brother. Um, uh, I think it was his brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's worked, but I'm like, this is the first. This is really probably the first thing I've actually seen him in. Um, and he's solid in. Yeah, this it's role. the I I wanted, and I but I'm pretty sure that I recognize him. He's got to. Am I am I wrong? He's got a brother, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He um. Alex Wolf. He is, yeah. He is, I think I'm. I think I'm recognizing him because of Alex. He is holding his own, and and so is so is Brittany O'Grady with Christoph Waltz, who is in full on, full of full use of his powers here. Like this is Christoph Waltz, ep- opening opening part of Inglorious Bastards. Christoph Waltz. He is just charismatic. He is completely in control and a fucking sociopath. Yeah. His his move of getting people to do shit by asking them multiple times. Yeah. Like you just refuse it. Like he just calls Elaine back at 3 a.m. It's yeah. so weird. Oh man. And, and, it works. and acts like it's she weird. didn't acts like they didn't have the conversation already. Like like we didn't just have this exact conversation. Yeah. He's like, I didn't like the answers, so I'm gonna start over. What was yeah. crazy with me was that when uh one the he invites him almost invites himself out to drinks because he mm-hmm. like, hey, where are you going? And then the guy's like, Oh, I was just gonna go grab a beer and kill some time before I go to with my girlfriend. And he just, and he just stares stands at him. there. Yeah. Like yeah. until the guy invites yeah. him, like mm-hmm. it like breaks him down of like, it's like just a battle of wills. <laughs> and yeah. Well, he comes, he comes across as sort of neurodivergent weird. And, and in a way where you're like, maybe there's just, maybe this guy just doesn't quite get social niceties, but then you start to realize, Oh no, this is actually, he's manipulating the whole time. Like he knows exactly what he's doing. No, like it's he he yeah. needed to have to go it's out with that guy tests. for drinks because he needed yeah. to take him to that other bar and meet that other yeah. girl and then test him yep. with that thing yep. and it what like it, it's obviously he doesn't know anything about video games or like everyone is like is he in charge now what what is <laughs> we should we should probably roll back what the premise of this show is a little bit um this is a a mobile games company that's successful at making very successful mobile games. And in the opening, a uh, a group of like middle middle school kids, like elementary school kids. I'm not sure. Yeah, young man. kids. Middle, they're really like young. Middle school kids. Middle they, young they're, kids. They're they're brought in to do do a tour, and they go to take them to Sang, the uh, the guy who was the head of the they're operation, like ten or twelve or something. And one of the kids, head of the company, the yeah. twenty year old company, one of the kids shoots him in the head and kills him. Yeah, pops him. Like <laughs> you no, know, shoots him several times. It shoots him several times. You're right. And and then says, "I want my mommy." And then Christoph Waltz shows up as a consultant who signed a deal with him a couple weeks ago and takes over the and starts making all these crazy changes. He like he tells everyone, you know, if you're working remote, if you're not here in, in, an, in an hour, you're fired and uh, mm-hmm. shit like that, which actually has happened for real, by the way. But, so they're also poking fun. But it's, at fun it's, at... it's brutal, but, but also business wise, a very effective. Like when they look back at his past companies that he's when they're trying to figure out who the fuck this guy is. All of the companies have crazy sales spikes and shit. Like it, he, yeah, he is effective, but he's also a monster. But yeah, it's horrific. Like uh, yeah. because I, I mean, I, I get that. Like, okay, he's saving the company, and then they're like weighing the benefits of like, well, maybe he's what this company needs. I'm like, no, he's not. Let this company no. die if this is what this company needs. Yeah, yeah. He's ca- canceling benefits for people on sick leave, uh, mental disability. Like, one of one of the first things we see from him is he there's when he says everyone has to be in there an hour, a woman in a wheelchair rolls up literally ten seconds late and he locks the door yeah. on her and she's like he's like no she's fired and he says to the to Elaine he's like why should I give her any dispensation yeah what's the difference between her and every other employee here and and, and I, that's what I lo- I saw I realized Elaine and these is, are all these are all tests yeah, yeah. well I realized Elaine is no like that's is about no Elaine at that point because she's like yeah. you're right and I'm like. No, no, he's not. She, you can no, say he's any not number. He's like, right. like, hey, maybe because she's in a wheelchair and it takes her a little longer. The to difference get is that she can't walk as good. <laughs> the difference yeah, that's, is that's, that she takes longer to doing. get places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she doesn't like even push back at and all. And that's why I, I want. I, 
I want to read the book just to see if they go more into this because like it it feels like there is a needful things kind of soul collection well, going go, on here of like both the characters it, go like back and there forth. to see how many people he can get to do yeah like how many people how, but like how many people can he get to do things that cross the line like he wants Craig to uh not become Catholic and break Craig up with his like right. yeah. like he. He's not exactly throwing wrenches in everybody's lives, but at the same time, he he wants them to do crazy shit. Yeah. Well, Craig like, is I, all I about Craig getting him out of there early immediately. If he'd gotten up and gotten in the bar fight. <laughs> and then, but then he's about to make Craig's game, and he's like, "Oh, okay, cool. Well, as long as he's making my game, then." And uh, she right. she wants to get but there. But then, like six Elaine gets the same. Yeah. She wants to be a creative li liaison for six months, so she can put that on her resume and get a job yep. someplace else. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, good lord, guys, you this is mercenary and I get what you're doing, but also <laughs> you can't if like these red flags that like they should quit so many times throughout the first couple episodes. I think the point is made throughout and, and you'll see this is that they are neither of them are particularly good people either because no, Elaine they, is probably they don't seem I don't know if you episode Five, I think Elaine ends that there's a uh, devil in disguise riff that they play where Elaine basically takes advice from him and does something pretty cold blooded to somebody. And I was like, oh, shit. And then uh, there's uh, that's in that same episode. Then you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, OK. Yeah. In that same episode, uh, Craig basically lies to uh, the lead, the, the Christoph Waltz character and to his girlfriend. And very effectively lied. You see, oh shit, this guy is a champion, world class liar. By the way, Christoph Waltz's character's name is Regis Patoff, which we turns oh, out yeah. is is the um, what is it registered United regulation States patent uh, U.S. patent office registered no registered U.S. patent office patent office yeah, yeah. it's just an acronym on a yeah box it's not even an acronym it's just yeah he just yeah. ran together it is some Kaiser Soze shit man yeah. yeah. Uh, like yeah. he must change I'm, his name every time he does that, or or maybe yes. no, he can't because they have to look him up for later because they look up yeah. his. And where I knew Whoa, he's always Regis Pat. Like off. when you got like you you got to know what kind of guy you're dealing with when the prosthetics company in Moscow that he did like oh yeah he increased <laughs> pr uh, uh output by uh uh double like he t doubled output and it's like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute there's only so many people that need prosthetic limbs. In uh, Moss in like, Russia, do the math. How did he get? Like, he so wait, and yeah, when he <laughs> when he looks at the stats and realizes that that how the, did the demand double? Yeah, like, yeah, but yep. it did. Yeah. Uh oh, and what yeah. did he do? Yeah, because he doesn't yeah, seem it, to be magic. So who did he push? What did he do? Yeah. Well, yeah, the other gr the girl they yeah, ran into I, I has half read the book her of this. body is fucking like. Mm -hmm. What is it like a Joe. fashion trend he convinced people to do, or what is this? Yeah, it's like a it's definitely a Faustian bargain type thing going this on. This is this is weird. How would you guys classify this genre wise? Because I feel like it's dark comedy. I feel like this uh, whatever, is not even as it. I feel like it's dark comedy. Yeah, it's not whatever like, the devil I, advocate, the, devil's advocate is. I guess the obvious comparison to this is Severance, and the Severance yeah. is notably better than this. Like Severance is is several steps better than this, but. Um, this well, this is Severance, trashier. This is Severance you know. is a is a dark drama, uh, and a sort I would of say this is more like Yellow piece. Jacket than anything else. Yeah, I can see that. But there, this is a this is a I I laugh at this more than anything else. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe this crazy shit. And I'm, I'm yeah, because well, he's a he's he's a super villain. Like <laughs> Yellow Jacket is a good comparison. I, I I definitely cannot wait to to check out more of this and see how this ends. I know, Les, you've gotten to the end. You said the ending is not like not terrible, but not great. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of unanswered questions. Yeah, that's, well, too bad. It, it, that's what I was thinking because they bring up so many things of like, okay, I know that they're probably not going to answer this in a satisfied because I want answers as far right. as right how, is this supernatural? Does this dude have a because he can convince people to do weird things in so little amount of time that it, you'd almost assume it has some of it has to be hypnotic yeah. or the thing he does to saying that we see early on. Whoa. Wow, and then was... when we get the we get, oh, when we get the damn. reveal of how he did it, where he's like, "Well, you don't have the money. I wonder if there's something else you could do for me." I'm like, "Oh shit, that's what he did." Yeah, that was like, like I thought we I thought we weren't gonna get that. Like they were just gonna leave that, yeah. but then they show it. And I'm like, "Oh my god, I only have more questions now." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think this may be kind of like Lost or one of those where I have to be just to, okay, except that I have to make up my own answers. 
but the ride has been fun so far. And like I say, Christoph Waltz here, this is this is him at the height of his powers. It's it's fantastic to watch. They do answer at least one thing that I was very happy about. I think the, okay. there there right. is at least one thing fully clarified on screen of like, yup, okay then. <laughs> All right, uh, let's have another side dish and let's talk about the Mandalorian, Nick, which we you sort of started going into. And we're we're gonna say spoilers if you haven't watched the uh, season opener. Uh, we're sure. gonna offer some spoiler stuff. Not a whole lot to spoil yet, but. Not a lot, but there's a couple things like that that uh I um I really like this. I had seen a couple people, I've seen I think Alan Sepinwall and maybe the guys from Variety had said this is kind of a disappointing opener. And they're like, oh, it's just a bunch of side quests. And I'm like, man, I kind of feel like that's what the Mandalorian does well. And I think I think um just like Ant-Man is getting kind of unfairly pilloried because it's not endgame, um, for whatever problems Ant-Man has. Uh, I think the Mandalorian is gonna is gonna be hit because it's not Andor. And the thing is, everything shouldn't be Andor. And I actually don't like Andor that much. And I I was like, the Mandalorian is the Star Wars speed I want. It's it's serious enough, but it knows that half the fun is crazy aliens and space dogfights and space pirates and shit like that. Yeah, well, I mean, Mandalorian is the good guy. He's uh. Yeah. He, he he's still a kind of badass bounty hunter, but he's much more of a Han Solo type of like, okay, he's the guy we can root for and, and yeah. uh, follow. And he's going to, no matter what, he's going to, even if it's just him being in the right setting to do the right thing, he'll probably do that. Yeah. But I do I... like that he uh, goes to like redeem himself and his mm-hmm. mission to redeem himself is like an impossible mission because... Yeah the whatever baths of Mandalore, like the, of the mines they might have been are, irradiated or yeah, like if they're been destroyed or supposed to be. And do you, do you feel like, I feel like there's, I, and I understand why this might be a problem for people. It feels almost like video game plotting. They're like, here's what you, here's what he needs to do. He needs to go do this quest, but in order to do this quest, he's got a side quest in order to get, the, and he needs, so you're going to need this tool. You're going to need the assassin droid in order to get the assassin droid. You've got to go find these parts. But before you get the parts, your old friend is accosted by space pirates. So like this oh, feels yeah. like a bunch of video game cutscenes put together. Well, this definitely but in feels a good very way. RPG of like, yeah. yeah. And, and all the other, the other seasons did too, as far as like, yeah. Hey, I'm, we, I'm down with that. You got to do this thing before that thing. And it's, yeah, it's all about the journey rather than the destination. He's, I like that. He's teaching Grogu Mandalorian ways. Yes. Now that Grogu has forgone being a Jedi, he's like, or at least learned as much about Jedi shit as he's gunning for now. He's learning about Mandalore stuff. So yeah. that ties um, into, they can do a lot with that, with like flashbacks and, uh, you know, just extrapolating on the Death Watch and what their ideals are and stuff. The set pieces this episode, there were several and they were all good. The opening thing with the giant crocodile gator, the giant giant crocodile thing. Was great. Cro- the the um, Alaturtle? Him... The croco- Crocodile? Yes. Yes, Crocoturtle. Uh, him uh, him going to... Gr- everything with Grief Karga and the newly revitalized planet. The Bo-Katan and Alone in her castle and Sad was really good. The Babu Freak stuff was fun. Like, all of it was fun. Like, I like I really liked every... And the, the, the space pirate thing at the end. Like, there's a there's like four or five good set pieces in this. And any one of them standalone was good. The dogfight's really fun. It really shows me of like it why I really, really like Star Wars levels dogfight. And then they do yeah, that Mandalorian yeah. sting every time he comes out of nowhere to get a like yep. and then uh, blows up a yep. guy from behind an asteroid. Yep. It's yep. it all works. It's 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 interesting. It's it's uh it's fun. It's funny. It's it has darker like a darker underlying of bounty hunting and shit, mm-hmm. but it's light enough to not feel it. It feels very Star Wars, at least to me. Well, I like the fake out in the beginning of like they're they're presenting it as if this is when Jin Jarn got his helmet. Like that's how I yeah. that's what I thought it was. I thought we were watching a flashback, and then of course he shows up, and you're like, oh no, this is actually modern day. This is current times, and uh, and it this is actually gonna we're gonna see um, what what you know what he's where his current status is. I, I thought that was cool, and seeing Grief Karga as like the the gone legit guy who's still a badass that showdown with him and the pirates in the street was so much fun 
Well, he's legit in the fact that he want he doesn't he wants to be a trade hub and he yeah. he likes the money coming in because he gets to live a high yeah. life. This is definitely a yeah. lot better than the bounty hunting ring he was running before. But yeah. in order to yeah. keep, maintain it, he has to keep a like level of like, ah, I can't okay, so the people I was buddies with before, I can't really be friends with now and keep my right. like like that's a guys, that's a school. That is not a bar anymore. You can't drink in there. <laughs> like Yeah. Yeah. I just Really fun scenes. Really, I, I'm I'm super glad to have it back. I, I also thought they did a great uh, what's job her it. name? Uh, the marshals. Like, what happened to the other marshal? Who? <laughs> yeah, she died on the way back to her home planet. Don't yeah, worry about I, I don't know. It. Yeah, no, I think she got recruited <laughs> to some special. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I love that. It just like casually wrote her out. It was great. I honestly, <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't have her killed off off screen. <laughs> like... Yeah, but the they they don't want to be uh, beholden to uh, the Republic. Or the New Republic. He was like, yeah. no, 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 no. I don't really, I'm, I want to be independent. So I'm yeah, thinking that they'll probably get, boss. they might get Timothy Oliphant to I was thinking the exact marshal. same thing. We saw him getting cyborged. I think he'll wind up yeah. being their marshal. Yeah, that's, I had that's the same I thought. thought, which is cool. Yeah, I think, I think we'll see the same thing. All right, let's, uh, let's have dessert. We got double desserts this week. Let's talk about Poker Face. This was, uh, oh, Natasha Leon directed this episode. Speaking of Mandalorian, I have spoken this 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 may be i don't know it's hard to say my favorite episode but i really liked this episode this one was really good <laughs> this uh, i mean crazy yeah. cherry cherry jones and nick nolte are both great and they they just are fantastic here uh luis guzman is always a joy yeah nolte basically playing like a phil tippet yeah uh, guzman is so like weird and constrained here it's great this episode does have a murder set in the modern times, but it's more about solving an old murder than anything else. That yeah. happened like mm-hmm. decades ago. Yeah. Um, I did think the story was a little yeah, the, rushed. The way at the this end. whole thing constructed together was great. I, I thought I thought the 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 bit at the end where it almost feels like Cherry Jones' character was like hallucinating a little bit. Like I feel like they rushed that ending a little bit. Well, what I realized is that they run out of time a little bit because they have this, they yeah. show, they show the same plot twice with, uh, yeah. Nick, like whatever is the, his name is in the beginning that they have to make the statue yeah. out of. And then Nick Nolte have the same arc of finding out mm-hmm. and confronting her about it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's kind of right. like, yeah. And it's like, and she kills them both. And so, you know, he's good. Like, yeah. And it's like, okay, why did we do this twice? Yeah. I did like the reveal of why she had the thing made. Like that, she's like she needed to unlock the that computer. That was crazy. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a great bit. Um, we are, I think we're what we got what like three more episodes, and then we're done with Poker Face for season one, which I'm sad about. But mm-hmm. oh no, we've got. Yeah. I think we got two more. I think there's there's only two more after this. But um, yeah, yeah this was eight, right? This was eight. There's ten total. Yeah, so we got two more. Uh, one of yeah, so there's two one more ups tomorrow. But yeah, this has been. A, so this I believe been Benjamin delight. Bratt is next is is back this week oh nice yeah, yeah. well even um, luis guzman yeah. in this episode we're gonna have to get was, back into the ron perlman of it like i forgot he like uh like this such a power like so many great actors in the show but like luis guzman playing a real small part in this was yeah. really good yeah uh also like and being really great at it like the guy that's just lived in the little basement mm-hmm. archives forever yeah and he's yeah. like, he's caught with like, oh, I, I actually rented those out. And he thinks he's in trouble because he's not supposed to yeah. rent those out. But it's really yeah. like, since it's the fucking evidence in a murder case, like it is way yeah. more intense it's than he way thinks worse it than is. That. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's let's have our other dessert, which uh, I think is just you and me, Nick, which is uh, Last of Us. Which I've seen some people say they thought this was kind of a filler episode, which I disagree with. Well, it depends because it, it, it isn't uh, in the video game this was a dlc that came out like i think a half a year after the actual game and it was kind of a for me it felt like kind of a a a trick for anyone like that like oh you didn't really get the if you skipped the bill frank storyline well here uh your money is definitely gay now (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) suckers yeah like yeah well and this this from what i understand this was a dlc thing like that that, that filled in the backstory Mm -hmm. uh yeah and, and and uh, it really fleshes it out and is quite necessary, I think, to explain exactly. Like, she gives a rundown of it, of like, hey, my friend uh, ended up 
uh getting turned and i like had a rough deal of it but it's that's really yeah. underselling what happened yeah um I uh, I really like this. I thought the way they shot the mall was really cool. This is this is why you can do this kind of thing on HBO and not on AMC. Like every time I think, why couldn't The Walking Dead have been anywhere near this good? It's partly as HBO money. money. Yeah, because like yeah. they didn't have the money to build a mall set that they're never going to use again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, that's the thing of like this set is obviously like oh shit, this is so much work and money went into a set that they yeah. really can't use again. But and, man, did it uh, did it it rewarded that like it it paid off dividends because it looks great. Yeah, and uh, it like even just the the flash like when they inserted the flashback as far as her taking care of Joel and about to lose the only other person in her life that she is even remotely close to mm -hmm. uh, is 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 good is a good justification position of like. Joel is telling her to go, like, leave him, and it's like, nah, dude, that's not happening. Like, that's not can't... gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Not she can't, happen. like, she's incapable of doing that. And even how it ends is like a. I, I like the idea of they're both bit. And mm -hmm. obviously, they think this is the end, because why wouldn't they? They both think they're gonna die. Yeah, we know yeah. that. Window and they're like, not, well, but... do we take option one, the easy way out, or two? And it was like, I, I'm not going to spend, um, I'm going to cherish every moment I have with you. No one's going to take that away from me. Yeah. Like, let's just go, like, let's just turn together. And I thought, like, that was a really powerful, whatever, how many, ever many seconds we have, I'll cherish those. And I thought that was a lovely yeah. sentiment. But it, also it was. Le leaves a dark implication because you know that her friend turned and she didn't. So yeah. she yeah, obviously she had, to had to kill, kill her, her friend. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, girlfriend, um, or whatever they were at that girlfriend. point. Her because... first, well, her first girlfriend, the first kiss, her she first ever crush. Had. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. The um, Last of Us has emotional depth that Walking Dead wanted but never achieved. Like these, these moments, these, these. This has a really, it's in such a dark show. Like, like you say, it's a very dark moment, but it's almost hopeful. Like the the whole yeah. thing of like, let's we're gonna save her every second. Like. That's that's a really notable thing. Well, it's the same thing with Bill and Frank of like finding mm -hmm. the silver lining in a in a fucked up world and finding yeah. the the joy and love in it. And I like that they can sell like these two these two people have obviously been best friends since the day they met and they feel immediately like friends that have been friends forever but haven't been friends for a minute. Like there's definitely a rift yeah. in a long yeah. felt history very effortlessly that I like. It's the same thing with Bill and Frank. It's the same thing with mm -hmm. Joel and his brother, uh, that mm -hmm. they can sell these very, like, these people know each other very well. There's a long established history, and it's it doesn't have to be told in a bunch of stories. It's felt in every line of dialogue and how they speak and act. And her giving her this perfect day, because she she's about to leave, mm -hmm. and then when she asked her to stay later and she says, yeah, I was crushed. I was like, yeah, oh. because we know what's coming. Yeah. Cause we know, we know yeah. that doesn't work. So that's even yep. sadder. Like it would be one thing if like, well, she was going to yep. leave anyway. So it was never going to, but, but she convinced her, she said, yes. I was like, fuck, that's heart wrenching. God yeah. damn. And I will, uh, there's definitely a bunch of articles going around of like, ah, uh, well, we really can't get rid of that killing our gays trope. Right. And I'm like, well, yeah, the story can't work if she doesn't die. Right. There's, I mean, it's one of those things of uh, the same thing when we were arguing with uh, Winter Soldier uh, and Falcon, where the new Cap's sidekick, what's his name? Battlestar. Bartle Battlestar, when he dies, it's like, oh, it's like, yeah, but that character has yeah. to die. So, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're killing the black guy, but there's no, like, the story demands that this needs to happen. <laughs> and I thought, you know, this is a, this is a post-apocalyptic story where, I mean, it's not a spoiler. I think to, to let you know that every, like everybody meets a pretty fucking just, except for Bill and Frank, I guess, because they have a very, I think they sure they die, but they, they, they won. They left, they lived their lives. They had their happily ever after. I, uh, in my opinion, I think that's different. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. And 
yeah, I think it's, it's just it was kind of unavoidable. And if they get a season two and they go into Last of Us Part Two, don't worry, guys, it gets gayer. <laughs> There's more gay characters. Not all of them die. There's even a trans character. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm excited for more of this. I'm glad I suck at video games. And didn't play the rest of this because uh, because I'm very uh, I'm very excited about about seeing where it goes. Um, yeah. Even me, I love I I love the slight differences. I love like, and even what they keep the same, I'm like, that's a smart thing to keep the same. Yeah, that's a smart thing to change. I love it. I love this is what a good ad- adaptation is supposed to be. Yeah, the and man, the the bar for best video game adaptation was pretty low, but they like soared. Oh over man, it. they swung so <laughs> far. I can't. <laughs> it's not have, even in the same league have, of anything else. They have absolutely fucked over anybody trying to adapt video games ever again because yeah. now that's what they're gonna this is what you're gonna get compared to that's it's like sucks. well you can't be like you gotta do last of us man you you can't the bar is no longer like even just like the halo show it's like this is now the bar congratulations yeah good luck twisted yeah. metal <laughs> uh, all right well that will wrap it up for us this week uh thank you Les. thank you nick good week of tv yeah thanks randy thanks nick thanks dudes uh thank you Thank you to our listeners. Thank you to our patrons. Mind you can go to patreon.com slash TV dudes. Throw us that dollar an episode. Listen to us talk about Guy Ritchie a lot. And uh, until next time, Richie's Riches. That's the name. TV Dudes out. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast out of Austin, Texas. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is done by our friend and original TV Dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TVDudes.com. I'm Randy Lander. I'm Les Weiler. And I'm Kyle Scott. Thanks for listening. <laughs>